Imagine you fire a probe toward Jupiter and tell it to skim an invisible shell in space, too deep, and Jupiter grabs it forever, too far, and it slips past, never to return. To hit that shell to within a hair's breadth, you'd need careful planning, navigation, and a lot of math. Now imagine a lump of ice and dust from another star doing exactly that, on its own. On November 23rd, a quiet update dropped online. New calculations about 3I Atlas, the third confirmed interstellar object to enter our solar system. Within hours, a handful of astronomers realized something was wrong with the picture. They were looking at what might be this comet's 13th anomaly. Not a flare, not a chemical oddity, but something far stranger. A level of mathematical precision no natural comet should ever achieve. Right now, 3I Atlas is drifting toward Jupiter. NASA's official trajectory says it will pass about 33.21 million miles from the planet. On that same day, Jupiter's hill radius, the invisible boundary where the planet's gravity stops winning against the sun, sits at about 33.24 million miles. Hold those two numbers in your mind for a moment. We'll come back to them because the tiny gap between them is the first clue that something about this orbit doesn't behave the way it should. In this video, we're going to walk through three strange features of 3I Atlas, a near-perfect brush with Jupiter's hill radius, a subtle invisible push that seems to nudge it into place, and a destination that lines up with some of the most delicate gravitational structures in the solar system. By the end, you can decide whether this is the wildest coincidence you've ever seen, or a sign that our understanding of what drifts in from between the stars isn't complete. For months, astronomers have been quietly feeding every new observation of 3I Atlas into NASA's JPL orbit system. More than 230 observatories, ground-based telescopes, survey facilities, space missions, have tracked this single object as it slides through the inner solar system like a faint, fast-moving shadow. Each time a new data point arrives, JPL recomputes the orbit. Uncertainties shrink. The path tightens. Randomness gives way to a clean arc. At first glance, 3I Atlas looked like what you'd expect from an interstellar visitor, a hyperbolic orbit a brief swing around the sun, then a one-way exit back into interstellar space. But as it headed toward Jupiter, its predicted path began to drift toward a boundary that almost nothing hits by accident. To understand why that's a problem, we have to talk about Jupiter's hill radius. Imagine Jupiter and the sun locked in a gravitational tug of war. Around Jupiter is an invisible bubble where, if you're inside it, the planet's gravity has a chance to capture you. Outside that bubble, the sun's pull dominates, and you're more likely to be carried along its orbit than fall into Jupiter's grip. That bubble is the hill sphere. Its radius depends only on mass, distance, and orbital speed. On March 16th, Jupiter's hill radius sits at roughly 33.24 million miles. According to the current solution, 3I Atlas will pass at about 33.21 million miles. The difference between those two distances is around 35,000 miles. That sounds like a lot, until you remember we're talking about a shell more than 33 million miles away. 35,000 miles out of 33 million is like threading a needle from the other side of a city. Now, real orbits always have error bars. Even NASA's trajectory includes a margin of uncertainty. But even when you account for that, 3I Atlas still sits impossibly close to Jupiter's hill boundary, like a dart stopping just short of a line drawn in chalk. In orbital mechanics, natural objects don't normally do that, not after being pulled by the sun, perturbed by planets, and pushed around by their own outgassing. It is the kind of alignment you'd expect if something were aiming for a very specific shell of space, or if there's a quiet force in the equation that we haven't fully understood. That's the first anomaly. The second is about how 3I Atlas ended up there at all. Because as precise as this pass looks, the comet hasn't only been moving under gravity. Somewhere along its path, something gave it a tiny, steady shove. Astronomers call this a non-gravitational acceleration. 
it's a slight deviation between the orbit you calculate using pure gravity and the orbit you actually observe. Normally, that's not mysterious. Comets leak. As they approach the sun, pockets of volatile ices heat up. Gas escapes, carrying dust with it. Each jet acts like a small thruster, pushing the nucleus in random directions. We've seen this many times. Comet orbits wander. Timing gets messy. Predictions drift. But what's happening with 3i Atlas doesn't feel like noise. It feels like a correction. When you look at the numbers, this non-gravitational push appears to have shifted 3i Atlas's path by roughly 62,000 miles. On its own, that's not shocking. Comets can produce that kind of change. What's strange is where that shift seems to have placed it. That invisible nudge brought the comet's path almost exactly onto the shell of Jupiter's hill radius. Not just closer to Jupiter, not just more or less in the right area. Onto a corridor only tens of thousands of miles wide, wrapped around a planet tens of millions of miles away. Natural outgassing doesn't usually act like that. It's messy, uneven, tied to patches of ice and cracks on the surface. It tends to blur trajectories not sharpen them. Here, the effect looks more like someone tapped the side of a rolling ball just enough to send it grazing the edge of a circle. Some researchers still say, coincidence, others suggest there might be a gravitational influence we're missing, or that the data might still shift as more observations come in. And then there's Avi Loeb, who points out something uncomfortable. Even for a controlled spacecraft, Lining up a trajectory this precisely with a theoretical boundary like the hill radius would be hard. Not impossible, but hard. The implication isn't, this must be artificial. It's that we've entered a zone where the precision itself becomes part of the mystery. Because if this were a probe, this is the kind of maneuver you might attempt. A subtle course correction. A careful aim toward an invisible structure in space. If it's a natural comet, then we're staring at a pattern our models struggle to reproduce. And this is where the third anomaly starts to matter. Because it isn't just how close 3i Atlas comes to Jupiter's hill sphere. It's what lives, mathematically, near that boundary. Around every massive body in orbit, there are a handful of special positions where gravity and motion balance out. Places where, if you park an object, it can stay in a stable configuration with surprisingly little effort. We call them Lagrange points. They're not science fiction. They're not conspiracies. They're workhorses of modern spaceflight. The James Webb Space Telescope sits near one. Solar observatories sit near others. Mission planners use these points as gravitational rest stops, places where you can burn less fuel and still maintain a useful position. They are, in a sense, the quiet harbors of the solar system. And as 3i Atlas approaches Jupiter's hill radius, it is also approaching the distance where some of these gravitational structures start to become relevant. No one is claiming it will slide neatly into a Lagrange point. That's not what the math says. But when you look at the combination, an interstellar object, a subtle non-gravitational push, a pass skimming the edge of a giant planet's hill sphere, near the distance where gravitational sweet spots can exist. The orbit stops feeling generic. It starts to feel staged. That doesn't prove anything. Nature can produce odd alignments. Given enough time and enough objects, coincidences will happen. The question is, how many layers of improbable do you stack before you stop calling it coincidence? Scientists, to their credit, have been careful. Many emphasize that we're still dealing with uncertainties. A few kilometers here, a few kilometers there, and the orbit shifts. Others argue that outgassing can, in rare cases, line up in ways that mimic intentional pushes. And some quietly admit that the math is puzzling, but prefer to wait for more data before entertaining anything beyond the safest explanations. Avi Loeb goes a step further. He notes that if you were designing a gravitational experiment, or releasing instruments, or trying to minimize fuel while surfing a planet's influence, the edge of a hill radius is exactly the kind of place you would target. Not because that means 3i Atlas is artificial, 
but because the resemblance between what you'd want to do intentionally and what this object appears to be doing naturally is getting harder to ignore. That's the uncomfortable space we're in. An interstellar comet showing a non-gravitational acceleration we can't fully attribute to messy outgassing, threading an invisible shell around Jupiter with accuracy that looks engineered, on a path that brushes the realm where we park some of our most expensive space hardware. No radio transmissions, no unnatural heat signatures, no obvious technological artifacts, just a trajectory that refuses to behave like random ice and dust. As 3i Atlas continues its slow drift toward Jupiter, what lingers isn't just the orbital data, it's the weight of everything we don't know how to classify yet. Maybe this is the kind of coincidence that happens once in tens of thousands of encounters, and we just happen to be watching the one that hits all the unlikely boxes. Maybe it's comet physics exposing gaps in our models, showing us that under the right conditions, outgassing and gravity can draw patterns that look intentional even when they're not. Or maybe we're brushing up against something that doesn't fit neatly into the categories we've used for a hundred years. Natural on one side, artificial on the other. Whatever the answer is, the universe isn't waiting for us to be comfortable with it. Right now, an object from another star is carving a line past Jupiter with disturbing precision. The numbers are there. The anomalies are there. The explanations aren't yet. If you want to follow this story as the orbit is refined, as new data arrives, and as the debate shifts from, this is probably nothing, to, we can't pretend this isn't strange. Stay with it. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a like so this reaches others who are listening for the same faint signals. And if you want to go even deeper into these quiet frontiers, consider becoming a member. Because somewhere out there, beyond Jupiter, beyond the hill sphere, beyond the last plotted line on a JPL graph, something is moving in the dark. And with objects like 3i Atlas, it feels like we're only just starting to notice where it's really going. In Cosmos, we trust.